Many Indian Americans are starting to reach the higher levels of the Republican Party, which is still overwhelmingly white. What does this mean? Ooh, this is a hot one. Hey, man, I like butter and I like chicken. You want to bring that over to our side, put it on some bread, even if it's flat bread, I say let's give it a shot. We got to talk about this. This is going viral. The New York Times, so many social media sites are writing about basically Usha Vance, whose real name is Usha Chilakori. She's married to J.D. Vance. Uh, her kid's are named Vivek. Vivek Ramaswamy almost got picked to be VP. He's going to go against Kamala Harris, who's half Indian. So a lot of people are like, yo, Indians are increasingly involved in American politics, but especially on the right side. Yeah, and guys, this is a very interesting topic. This does deal with race, and we understand race and perception of race and culture always changing depending on who's in power and how people are viewed and the immigrant waves. But anyways, guys, you know us. We're going to get into it, so buckle up. Uh, please hit that like button. Check out other episodes of the Hop Bob boys, if you appreciate this type of material, show us a super thanks too. So we've talked about this issue before, Andrew, but there's new information. There's new people popping up in the comment sections because this is going hyper viral right now. That means people are weighing in right. this side, weighing in that side. Uh, Nick Fuentes and some of the more people on the right that tend to be more about like the blood quantum being white don't mm -hmm. like Usha Vance. But other people are more like, we'll take her as long as she's supporting our agenda. She's smart. She went to Yale. I like the Ivy League Indians. Bring them on over like Vivek is. I don't care if their kid's name Vivek. I want them on my side. But other people are like, I don't want them on my side because I don't trust them. Right. So now there's an argument. It seems like there's an argument amongst Republicans and there's different levels of Republicans, guys. There's the MAGA and then there's the Republicans and the, there's the Mitt Romney Republicans. But there's some disagreement where some people are like, ah, Usha Vance is like, uh, Usha is Indian and then right. she's making the vice president's kids all Indians and their name like how Indian are his kids you know they're half right. Indian are they gonna be Hindu instead yeah. of Christian because I thought JD Vance is supporting the hillbillies like me yeah so and, and then there's other people who are like no it's fine listen she's just a really smart girl so just what chill out you know right so right. anyways uh David when it comes to like Indians and I guess the fact that Indians are kind of like I guess recently especially have been prominent figures, at least in the Republican Party, there's people who are questioning, like, is it because Indians think they're Caucasian or they can be passed as Caucasian or what else would be attributing to their kind of rise in the Republican Party? Right, right, right. Here's some questions we're going to attempt to answer. By the way, guys, actually, to a lot of these things, Andrew, there is no answer. No, but we're we going to break down we how to think about it. So Keep here, watching the video, guys. Here's the first part. The Republican Party is mostly white. It was 90% white. It was 88% white. Now it's the least white it's ever been at 85%. Okay, which is still pretty white. There's nothing wrong with that. But, but some it, people it think white. that Indians that are joining the Republican side secretly think they're white or at least Aryan. Uh. Due to this lawsuit that was filed in 1915 by a Sikh Jat, which is like an Iranian Indian. Let's run the clip. Is a high caste Hindu of full Indian blood born in Punjab, India, a white person? This question was asked before the U.S. Supreme Court in 1923. The plaintiff, Bhagat Singh Tin, was an educated English-speaking Indian immigrant and U.S. Army veteran who had already tried to naturalize twice as a U.S. citizen by arguing that he was- Boom! So Andrew, in the American legal system, it has been debated for a hundred years whether Indians are Anglo adjacent by being part Aryan, Aryans from Iran, not necessarily Muslim at the time, they could have been Baha'i, Christian, whatever religion they were. They conquered North India, right. mixing with them to make Nikki Haley's and Tim Rovers and this girl who gave the prayer, they, they almost look like they're like Italian. Yeah, listen, and I, I think 1915, that was a few decades ago, obviously, and things have changed and immigration waves have changed. And uh, maybe that was, you know, and, and I do understand that North Indians, far North Indians, they do look different and they're of different blood than the South Indians. Guys, right. India is a very diverse country, just like a lot of big countries. I understand that. So I think that that's why, you know, I, I don't personally think that Indians in America are a monolith or that they should be defined by this case in 1915 because this is just at a certain time when like people really didn't even know what an Indian was. Right, right, right. I mean, there's some talk even that Gandhi was justifying that they were like Aryans too, like this back in South Africa. And that was like a whole complicated thing internally within that system. So there's a lot of stuff basically that we don't know about. But Andrew, basically 
Aryan adjacent or whatever, like white adjacent Indians. When we say Aryan, I think just people are getting like an image that they're talking about, like the Aryan brother. Right, right. You know right. what I mean? I'm just talking I'm about saying, people from this part of the world. Just I say guess. maybe Caucasian by the yeah. Caucasian. People Mountain, from whatever. the Caucasoid Mountains, I guess, whatever. Yes. They would be joining white Latinos like Ted Cruz and Marco Rubio and non-Muslim Middle Eastern people as the minority groups that are switching over to the right side. Right, and people think by having like a decent amount of Indian representation amongst Republicans and Latino representation, then that's going to sway le- big national large- elections. Yeah, that's going to sway Latino voters, which there's a ton of Latino voters, and there's actually quite a big Indian population in America. Right, right, right. So that is why they had a Sikh prayer at the end of the Republican National Convention in 2024, but other people were mad about it because people said, this is not a Christian prayer. Worship of other gods is totally reprehensible to the God of the Bible. This is unacceptable. Somebody said, just when you thought Amber Rose and the Republican Party were getting inclusive, and this is being discussed on a lot of different forums left, right, up, down, neutral. Mm. So long story short, Andrew, somebody said, too bad Usha Vance is a social climber married to a grifter. I don't even think J.D. Vance is a true hillbilly himself. So basically, this is basically indicating that that people just want to go with whatever party gives them the best life. Right. And is this true? Is it not? Is it basically like, Everybody was aligned with the left, Andrew, that was a, a elite minority until it just seemed like they had a better chance on the right. But yeah, no, I mean, I, I just think like, listen, people are willing to overlook the slight, I guess, connotation of racism on the Republican side uh, if, as long as the values, the main core values line up. Like as long as people agree with a lot of the Republican values, they're going to overlook, you know, some of the ignorance on that side. Right, for sure. right. But this is beyond a racial lens, Andrew. Some people are saying, how does a highly educated woman from Yale immediately marry a guy and then immediately set out, uh, uh, basically, that, that J.D. Vance wants to take away women's rights. But his wife is a highly accomplished, highly educated lawyer from Yale. And then everybody is quoting Pete Buttigieg, could Pete Buttigieg recently went on Bill Maher and said that re- basically rich and powerful people have no loyalty to any other identity other than being rich and powerful, whatever makes them more rich and powerful. Mm, so, so this maybe, is like basically answering people's questions about why would Usha Vance, if she's an empowered woman, marry a guy who wants to seemingly, at least on some aspects, disempower women. Right. Well, maybe being rich and powerful is the overarching identity in this case. Right, right, right. And I think that that is actually the key point here. By the way, there is some Indians on the left, Ro Khanna, Jagmeet, Jagmeet Singh is very left in Canada. Pramila Jayapal, where, although Rishi Sunak, Andrew, very conservative leader of the UK, mm-hmm. was the prime minister. So, Andrew, point number one here, when we get into these dynamics, there's a lot of internal dynamics that we're not familiar with on the outside. So basically, a lot of these people, Andrew, that are Indians, that are leaders in the Republican Party, they may be come from elite aristocratic families in India. So that basically makes them want to center themselves with whoever they view as the elite aristocrats of America. Okay. So basically it's just elite over there to elite to over here, which typically is more right. Yeah, I think that uh, makes sense. If you come from a good family in India or uh, I guess a high caste, if you care about that, um, and you come to America, then you're going to want to identify more with the upper class. Yeah, I guess it's kind of like... Even for other Asians, like if 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 a really rich, uh, well-to-do Asian from like, I don't know, like you talking Taiwan, about a Mongoloid Asian, yeah, right? like a Taiwanese person comes over here, uh, they may want to associate more with the upper class of America than the yeah. lower working class Asian Americans. Yeah, here. yeah. I mean, let's be honest. Statistically, the richer you are, it depends on how you got your money. A little bit tech money tends to be a little bit more left, but they the richer you get, the the probabilities you go right for whatever reason, this or that, go up. Mm. Point number two, Andrew, a lot of things change over history, court case after court case. For example, Andrew, in 1909, Lebanese immigrant George Shishim, Andrew, in New York City was considered Mongolian because Lebanon in historically was conquered by the Yellow Horde. Yeah, so this is another weird thing where it's like, which definition are you going by? And I think science and geography as... Uh, and history has advanced so much in the past, like, 80, 90 years. Our knowledge of it and our categorization of people is so different, you know? It, it's a lot more 
uh, minute and a lot more detailed. Is it crazy in the Western world that use it, used to categorize people about whether you had historically been ruled by the Golden Horde or not? Right. Like, literally, if you had, like, 1% Genghis Khan blood, you were more with the ace. We can't trust you. Yeah, man. Yellow peril. That was a real thing. Literally driven by the Golden Horde. I said Yellow Horde earlier, but, you know, same f- function. Um, even Point number three, Andrew. Even within East Asians in America or East Asians existing in the Anglosphere, there has always been a hierarchy. In apartheid South Africa, Japanese were one of the only non-white groups deemed honorary whites, while Chinese were labeled Asian and given second class. And obviously, I believe uh, Africans were labeled third class. Yeah. Yeah, it seems like in East Asia, though, I would say at least currently... um, I would say China is the most powerful country, right? But then Japan culturally is considered a lot more liked and cooler. And maybe Korea sneaking in there too. Yeah, and I think Korea is, Korea is sneaking in there. South Korea is sneaking in there. So it's like, but that's from, there's, there's, there's political power and then there's yeah. soft power. But of course, we all understand Japanese uh, culturally have been very strong and very well respected throughout the decades. Right, right. Especially from the Anglosphere world. Um, I would say Philippines is in there as viewed as a friendly country, but maybe more blue collar. And uh, point number four, Andrew, even within the right wing, there is currently a dispute between different factions over the value of whiteness. What is white culture actually defined by and what does it white culture mean? Yeah, because some people are thinking like, well, white just means white blood and we got to keep the white blood pure because like if there's less of us, then this country's going down. But then there's the other thought where they're like, hey, man, I just want someone who's smart and behaving like a white person right. or what I believe to be behaving like a nice white person. That's all I want. If they can think and talk like a nice white person, just, just, just it's fine. If you want to analyze it, Nikki Haley and Bobby Jindal both converted from Sikhism and Hinduism to Christianity. Mm. J.D. Vance's wife, Andrew Usha Chilakuri, did not convert. She's a proud, still practicing Hindu. Same with Rishi Sunak. Yeah, so they're like the 2.0 where they don't have to change the religion to an Anglo religion. Right, right, right. I think Vivek and, and uh, Usha are very uh, unapologetically you know, Indian, which is cool. And I, I do think it's surprising that J.D. Vance's kids have Indian names. And I think that for a lot of, I guess, more racist Republicans, that's what's making them uh, d- like think twice about J.D. Vance because they're like, wait, who, right. whose team is he? Is he just pure pro-minority? Hey, it sure don't seem like what a hillbilly would do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, point number five, Andrew. Uh, A lot of East Asian leaders generally come out of very coastal East Asian areas. However, Indian leaders have emerged from very non-Indian areas such as North Carolina, South Carolina. Yeah, no, I think when uh, Bobby Jindal was, uh, was he Louisiana governor? That was surprising. Dude, to have a brown guy, the governor of Louisiana, that to me was very interesting. He did try really hard to adapt. But still. Yeah. Like, they don't even know, like, what's the Indian population in Louisiana? Like, literally, like, it's not very large. Right, right, right. So, like we said, I mean, it goes to show you that East Asians were still, I guess, like, pretty separated and not part of the Western world. I think Our faces say we're foreigners. Yeah, I think that India is actually the furthest east of that can, because it's still west of the Himalayas. Anything east of the Himalayas is like an alien land to people. Yeah. India still barely falls within the Western sphere of, like, 100 years ago. Yeah, I feel like for among like mongoloids like east asian looking people for us to be fully accepted in america as american we have to be like way more american like we have to like be in the marines and be like a sergeant and like we just got to show that we basically killed people for america and then america's like i I would say our loyalty threshold is like really really high because people just are like y'all some aliens basically um, from mars point number six Will Asians who act Republican and elite more like country club Ivy League Mitt Romney Republicans ever truly be accepted? Mm. So this is an argument right now. A lot of people are saying that the Usha Vances and the Vivek Ramaswamis, et cetera, et cetera, they're just being early adopters saying eventually, yes, they will replace the old Mitt Romney elite tier of Republicans. Yeah. Right. That is going away. Other people are saying, obviously, on the left, Andrew, you guys will never be accepted as POC. Uh, yeah, I think that, you know, for me, I don't think Asians, most Asians actually want to be white. I don't think a lot of people actually in their heart want to be another race. But I think that a lot of 
the core values of upper middle class, moderate Republicans, which would be like Mitt Romney, a lot of those core values align with a lot of like upper middle class Asians. Right. Such they were upper as, middle class in Asia, upper yeah. middle or worked their way up to the upper middle class, yeah. I guess. And when some I mean sort of Asian in this case, I'm including Indians like Usha Vance from a good family. But she's from the West Coast, San Diego area. But her parents were educated. So she went to Yale, obviously, by all elite. Ivy tra- League, whatever. Trained by Amy Chua. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and so I think it's like, does if your core values align with the Republican side. But I think what is most interesting to people is that nowadays the Republicans are so closely associated with MAGA Republicans because MAGA is on the Republican side that it looks like when you're an educated upper middle class Indian or Asian, then you're supporting MAGA too. Right. And people are like, wait, 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 how could you be on the same side as MAGA? That doesn't make sense. You know what I'm saying? Right, That's right, what right. is making like a lot of people's brains explode. Right, right, right. Basically a lot of people, it doesn't really make sense. Basically, people are ranking their priorities and going with whatever they care about most. And point number seven, Andrew, it always goes back to my basic breakdown because it seems like the left is a little bit delusional and oversimplistic about individual morality and the right is more so living in unbelievably harsh truths about power dynamics and alignment. So basically, people on the left are like, I can't believe Usha Vance would side with people who would go against her people just based off look. And I'm like, bro, Let's be honest about human nature. People always, historically, if you look at wars and everything, people have always aligned themselves with the conquerors once it looked like they had no chance of winning. Yep. That is the harsh reality of human nature. Forget about what a Disney movie says and like, you know what I mean, this and that and loyalty and love over hate. I'm talking about the real functioning mechanics of humanity. Yeah, I mean, if you, where does that old saying come from? If you can't beat them, join them. Right, right, right. If you came to America, you're not gonna beat... I guess, elite white people in America. So then if you can, you join them, right? Right, That's right, the right. Thinking. And I guess on the right, people are just, you could say it's heartless or lack of compassion, but they're more playing into the actual dynamics that govern human nature. For example, the ones in power are always more right wing because they're in power in capitalist societies. The rich in capitalist societies will always be more right wing because that's what protects their pre-existing power. Mm. It's as simple as that, guys. We don't got to overcomplicate it with all this and that. Duh. Anyway, guys, ultimately, I think that there is a split between the Republican puppet masters and the average hillbilly white that they're using to maintain power in elections. Yes, there's definitely a class split and even a priority split. The elite Indians that are going with the right are more good so going with the puppet masters, even if they must side with some unsightly dynamics of racist puppets. Right, and I think a lot of other Asians on the Republican side feel that too. You know, they're gonna they're going to deal with the slight amount of racism or mistrust of their amount of racism, however you wanna measure it. But the racism on the Republican side, they'll deal with it just because they feel like I guess they feel that strongly that that's the right party for them. Right, right, right. And I mean, that's the nature of a two-party system when I'm sure people agree and disagree with aspects on both sides, but they're ranking their priorities, weighing them out, rich, powerful people. I'll tell you this. The rich, powerful identity side matters a lot more than all the other stuff. Maybe to someone with, that without power and without money, the other stuff outweighs the power and the money. I've been working all day. Not well, well, sh- How's the rest of the song? Oliver going? Anthony, he was speaking out of, against power and money and not trying to colorize it, but uh, at this point, it's become so intermeshed. Oh, the rich the- man from rich man. All right, anyways, guys, uh, let us know what you think in the comments down below uh, of this. Uh, this is can, can elite Indians enter a the, become the new Republican elite? Guys, I mean, listen, it's trending right now. Like, if you look at how many Indians are on the Republican side and on the Democrat side, but most namely, notably, on the Republican side, I think it is interesting. And this is, I mean, again, Indians are not a monolith. I don't think every Indian person has to act the same. And I don't think Indians from different backgrounds, just because they're all from this place called India, it doesn't mean they all are going to be the same. Just yeah. like any big country with a lot of variants. It is not a model. Honestly, I think the richer white Latinos going Republican from what I can see on all voting numbers and just visually on a representative visual basis, it goes to show you that maybe it always was more about class than country of origin or region of origin. All right, everybody, let us know what you think in the comments down below. This was a hot one. So 
Uh, yeah, and obviously, you know, it's definitely election season. A lot of interesting stuff going on in the world. That's why we're talking about it. So let us know what you think in the comments down below. Uh, love to hear your perspective. Keep it civil. As always, check out Smala Sauce. On an unrelated note, it's very delicious. But anyways, until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.